AMD shares are up sharply this morning in reaction to a dynamite quarter. Uh, and fabulous guidance. The stock's already up around 15% so far this year, uh, which is very unusual for most of the semiconductors, by the way. To talk about, this is an exclusive interview and a total treat. We have got Lisa Sue. Lisa Sue, congratulations on a much better than expected quarter. Good morning and good to uh, be talking to you and David. But David's from Queens, not from <laughs> Philly. All right, Lisa. <laughs> A lot of people felt that you were going to fall the way of your uh, relative, Jensen Wong, and, 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 and NVIDIA. But you did not follow that pattern. You actually got it up to a great second half. Can you please distinguish between a company that a lot of people you are a fellow traveler with and the real AMD that you have built? Well, Jim, look, I think uh, we finished off a, um, a good Q4 and actually a very strong 2018. I'm pretty uh, pleased with the results. You know, if you look at what we did in 2018, uh, we grew revenue 23 percent, we grew margins four points, and we added $1.2 billion of new revenue. And it's really on the basis of products and product momentum. You know, that's been our story over the last uh, few years. And uh, it's about, you know, uh, gaining market share. And particularly, we were very pleased with both our PC market as well as our data center results uh, for 2018. I but let's talk about the Getty market share. At least I don't think a lot of people realize the uh, the leaderless uh, Intel situation. You have been taking share like I cannot believe from one of America's greatest companies, Intel. I know that you are personally going after accounts. Could you talk about share take in the, the red hot PC sector? Well, I, I think, again, it goes back to our strategy. You know, our strategy is really focused on innovation and uh, product momentum. And uh, we've just had a very, very strong product cycle. You know, our, our rise in products, which go into uh, both uh, desktops and notebooks, has just been ramping very nicely um, over the last five quarters. And, uh, you know, we believe we've gained share again this uh, last quarter here in Q4 for the fifth straight quarter. And it's, you know, it takes time. Um, some will say that it has taken time, but we're happy with the results. Uh, as we've gone through 2018, and actually we're even more excited about where um, that market uh, can go for us in 2019. Okay, well, data center, in, Intel called it out as indigestion, not that strong. NVIDIA questioned uh, how strong the data center is. I don't see any of that kind of question from AMD. Is that because of your tie-up with Amazon and Microsoft, or is it because it's still a low base for you? Yeah, you know, Jeff, I think the way we think about data center is, look, it is strategically a great, great market. I mean, if you think about um, all of the expansion in the cloud, all of the expansion in the enterprise, um, there are plenty of new workloads. We have tons of data that need new data centers. So that's the long-term trend. Uh, now, you know, there are, there are some, you know, short-term dynamics. You know, people have talked about cloud indige you know, indigestion. And from our standpoint, look, again, this is a share play for us. Uh, we had our strongest uh, data center quarter in Q4. Uh, we had a very strong quarter for our um, Epic CPUs. Uh, we more than doubled the units sequentially. Uh, we had a strong quarter for our GPUs in the data center, and it's because we're looking at new workloads and new deployments. So yes, we're starting off of a low base, but we view this again as a share gain opportunity for us as our products really gain momentum. I cheered your quarter last night on Mad Money. I instantly got the reaction from several analysts and several investors that Lisa Sue is uh, giving you a guide in the second half that is too aggressive and that perhaps you should be more skeptical. Uh, do you fear that perhaps uh, there could be any sort of slowdown that you're not seeing? Because I have to admit, you are predicting a pretty good second half, Lisa. Uh, no question, Jim. And look, we, we see all the signals that are out there. Um, you know, certainly there are some concerns about the macro and what's going on in China. Uh, you know, there is a little bit of uh, short-term uh, concern in the data center. But we look at this as, you know, let's not major on those things. Let's major on the product story. Again, we're starting from a place where uh, we think our products, especially our 7 nanometer products, um, in the data center and in PCs are going to be extremely competitive. Uh, we'll be first to seven nanometer, uh, we believe, in uh, uh, 2019. And that's a big competitive advantage. So uh, we are you know, playing to our strengths. It's a product story. Uh, yes, there are some macro headwinds in there. And, and so our Q1 guide was um, a little bit lower uh, than some might have expected. But for the full year, uh, we still see a, uh, a great opportunity. And particularly when we talk to our customers, about what's important to the customer set and what are they trying to accomplish 
and how do we align sort of the AMD product portfolio with sort of the customer, um, you know, customer needs and requirements in, uh, in the time frame. Yeah, Lisa, it's David. I guess that seems to be the focus of investors this morning in terms of your confidence in that second half. Uh, back to Jim's question and your answer there. Uh, you know, you talk about customer traction giving you confidence and new product ramps. What else? Uh, you know, given that your first quarter guidance was lower than many expected, it's going to have to be kind of a hockey stick here as this year goes along. Yeah, David, you know, the way we look at it is, you know, again, I think we understand the dynamics of our business. Our business is different um, from some other businesses um, from the standpoint that we have a different mix of business. I would say we are a bit more diversified. So we have, you know, PCs, data center, you know, and gaming are all parts of our market. And, you know, we do have, uh, let's call it some headwinds in the early part of uh, 2019 due to some of the, uh, the graphics uh, channel situation. But when we look overall, again, we see um, you know, good markets. They're large markets when you look at, um, you know, we look at our TAM as a $75 billion TAM and we're a $6.5 billion company. So in, under that backdrop with the um, competitive products that we have, with the customer engagements that we have, uh, we are you know, somewhat optimistic about where we're going um, in 2019. And like I said, this is uh, something that is very much at the core of what we believe in. It's been a multi-year strategy and uh, we're continuing to execute on our multi-year strategy. Earlier this week, Jim and I spent a lot of time on NVIDIA when it surprised the street with that very negative uh, guidance. Um, China, gaming, one of the reasons why in terms of fewer chips being sold. Are you seeing any weakness there in that market? Yeah, so the way we think about uh, gaming, David, is we really look at gaming across the entire spectrum. So we look at gaming in PCs, uh, we look at gaming in consoles, we look at gaming in the cloud. Um, I think overall gaming is still a very good secular market, so uh, you know, we're optimistic about gaming um, over the long term. Um, in the short term, you know, we do have some headwinds, uh, particularly uh, in um, you know, gaming in the, uh, sort of the, uh, the, uh, the channel market. Uh, but again, we view that as people are still buying GPUs. So, you know, we sold more GPUs in the fourth quarter um, in terms of sell through to end customers than we did in the third quarter. And I do think that gamers are a very discerning group of people. And so they're looking for, you know, the right performance at the right price point. And uh, we're going to continue to deliver new products to that market um, as we uh, go through 2019. Uh, at least I'm coming back to you. You know that you're one of my heroes. When we first met, I disparaged some of AMD's activities in uh, balance sheet versus what Intel is doing at NVIDIA. Obviously, you've proven right, me proven questionable. Uh, I see you taking share in PC and workstation uh, CPUs from Intel. Uh, smaller share gains right now in, in server, uh, but will that not change when the 7 nanometer Epic arrives because you've got a better mousetrap, and will you not be able to take even further share in your incredibly growing, well, well growing market of servers. Well, I would say, Jim, it's a very, very complicated mousetrap, <laughs> but um, you know, we do believe that um, our uh, Epic second generation servers, uh, you know, we made some big bets a few years ago. When you think about uh, you know, the semiconductor chip cycle, we have to decide three or four years in advance what we're going to do in 2019. Um, and we made some big bets, and we bet on seven nanometer, and we bet on a new innovation around how we put these chips together. And our second generation Epic Gym, we're going to double the performance per socket, double the performance per socket. And when you have that kind of inflection point um, in performance, um, it has to translate into um, uh, you know, better results, and, and that's really what we're focused on executing. So that's the, uh, that's the play in servers. Lisa, where are you in terms of thinking that there could be a trade deal with the Chinese? It's obviously important for all American technology companies. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. We're watching um, you know, those discussions very closely. Um, clearly, uh, we would all like to see a resolution, and uh, you know, we're somewhat encouraged by the talks that are going on now. But you know, we have to plan for you know, all scenarios, and you know, China is an important market for us. Uh, we have um, a lot of customers, and uh, you know, both end users as well as uh, partners in China, so you know we would like to see uh, see this be resolved um, as soon as possible.